Welcome back to Mages and Murder Dads, the best show dedicated to the Baldur's Gate franchise and beyond. I'm Cameron, and I play Ticklevar the Sorcerer. And I'm Danny, and I play Balthazar the Barbarian. This is episode 30, and in uh, this episode we are finally advancing the story forward. Yes, we have run out of ways to uh, delay. We have run out of ways to avoid advancing the narrative of this game. We are locked in, uh, and, and, and we're going. We're heading for it. You could say we're casting haste on this story. Oof, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's say that. Let's mm-hmm. say that every time. Every single time. Like yeah. this video if you like that. <laughs> like like <laughs> that this video, joke. and if you don't like it, hit the like button anyway. Just mm-hmm. give, me, give me what for. Um, you should always do that. You should like this video right now, as I said uh, in the last episode, and in all episodes in the future. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet already, you should do that. You should uh, get all of our video content uh, streamed directly into your, uh, I don't know, brain zone. You can mm-hmm. follow us both on Twitter, and lo and behold, you might notice some differences if you're on the actual YouTube page, because we have rebranded into uh, a more, um, I don't know, uh, comprehensive. Sexy. Well, I was going to say comprehensive, but sexy absolutely works. Mm-hmm. Um, brand, establish, name, personhood, corporate, uh, free speech. The in- man. Entity. Uh, called Range Touch. Yeah. How about that? We got a new little icon. You can probably see that from, from where you're sitting this very moment. And uh, you may ask yourself, what does this mean for all this this great Baldur's Gate content that I, I like? I, I'm afraid of change because I like the way things are. Do not worry because we are still making Mages and Murder Dads. Mages and Murder Dads is just nested under a larger universe of content that we'll be able to create using Range Touch. Yeah, so you know, like the Marvel universe, the Marvel expanded universe is the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know? And this this opens up like a lot of cross. What about all the all the cross promotional opportunities? Like, what if there's a crossover Mages and Murder Dads Earth Defense Force episode? Oh, oh my God! They can yeah. just all appear here. That probably won't happen. No, but we do have all kinds of uh, new stuff in the in the pipe. I, we've said that at the end of the last few episodes, and this is it coming to bear. So we have another couple new series that are going to be showing up uh in the next month or so and and we hope uh, you'll enjoy all of that but that's not what this show is all about no I, I said all of that to say that you can follow the official ranged touch at ranged touch uh twitter account and that's down in the description below alongside our personal twitter accounts that you can also follow if you're not doing that already you can like us on facebook i just remembered that i have not changed the facebook over to range touch yet should probably do that i'll do that tonight mm-hmm. and uh you know a shout out to all of our wide a uh, commenting community across the many different platforms of people who care about the this show. Mm-hmm. You're all really great. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, but there's someone playing like a like a a dragon, a fire breathing dragon, only using fire breath on the bosses. Yes. So so that's the kind of comment we get, and uh, we think that's quite good. Also, mm-hmm. a very great comment from uh, uh, Modality. Um, in, uh, on the last one who said that, you know, the Thieves Guild, what makes the Thieves Guild so angry? We spent all the last episode trying to find and figure out what Thieves Guilds are all about. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he pointed out that Thieves Guilds are just mad when a crime happens. That they didn't commit. That they did not commit. Yeah. They're like, mm-hmm. kind of like the, the double police, which I think they're is, the, uh, interesting. Yeah. I, I, that, 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 those are golden comments. You need to be checking them out. Mm-hmm. But that's not what we did today. We didn't just read comments for today. No, did we? No, we 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 made decisions, and we may have made different decisions. We made we made a lot of choices. I'm looking here at the show notes, and uh, Danny's got a lot of um, capital letters, <laughs> I would say. And uh, so the big decision that we made here, uh, that we alluded to at the end of the last episode, was that we will be, for the first time, actually making significantly different choices here during this episode. We mm-hmm. have chosen different allies. Which these allies were people that we kind of we were we were forced into choosing one faction or the other because, uh, as you know from our from like earlier in the story, 
our stepsister of sorts, Emelyn, has been captured by this person, Irenicus, who's a big bad wizard who, who captured us and kidnapped us and tortured us for an undisclosed period of time. And Balthazar is on a personal quest for vengeance. Is Ticklevar, like, on a quest for vengeance, or is Ticklevar trying to rescue Emelyn? Uh, he's still trying to rescue Emelyn, even though he doesn't really think they have any kind of emotional connection. It's more like a legalistic demand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the lawful side yeah. of, of Ticklevar. Okay. So, on one hand, you have this fellow Galen Bale who came up to you and said, Hey, I'll give you tw- if you give me 20 grand, I'll tell you where your sister is, and I'll, I'll get you over there. Um, once you made 15 grand in the city of Baldur's Gate, a shadowy figure, Valen, appeared and told you, hey, my mistress will, will do the same thing Galen is for only 15. Then Galen finds out and says, hey, I'll do it for 15 too. So that's kind of where we were left. And then we went off and did a number of adventures. We Like for years. For years. We fought dragons <laughs> while Balthazar fought dragons. Um, we saved townships. We cleared out uh you know cursed temples we discovered not one but two separate shrines to forgotten gods i mean we we got around one could Mm -hmm. say uh, in those various different episodes and now we're back and i went to galen bale and i said all right super buddy here's that 15k let's Mm. go what did what did galen bale do after you gave him the money he said let me refer you to my esteemed colleague and then he sent me back to the uh, Shadow Thief house, the Guild Hall. If you remember from last episode, we spent a lot of time going in and out of the Shadow Thieves Guild Hall. And uh, he said, all right, go there. And you go to the bottom floor. And lo and behold, there's a secret door. And Ooh. behind that secret door is my real boss, the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Mm-hmm. It's the worst thing you could think of. It's the most horrifying thing that one could think of. It's not mm-hmm. that. It's this dude named uh, Aaron Linvale. He's the Shadow Master. So if you remember last episode when I said, ooh, I think because they were referring to like a, a bigger, higher up boss, and I thought that was Galen Bale. Mm-hmm. Not Galen Bale. It's this guy, Aaron Linvale. And he says, he tells me there's another guild in town, and they are creeping up on the Shadow Thieves. And before they can spend my money to do what I wanted them to do with my money. Hmm? We got to do something else first. We got to clear out this guild to clear up the supply pipeline, the infrastructure pipeline, to uh, rescue Emowyn, basically. So Aaron Linvale's saying, I physically cannot rescue Mm -hmm. your sister before we take out this competition is that right yeah like like we don't have the operational capabilities at this moment mm, yeah what yeah. what what did ticklevar think about that he said okay he okay went, went and did some stuff so but but uh before we get to what i did I, you know yeah. had some different missions this is a very uh very structured you know uh chapter mm-hmm. this is chapter three by the way we didn't say that that's soon, right. Yeah. As soon as you give money over to Galen Bale, or as soon as I give money over to Galen Bale, it was like boom, out of chapter two, that big, wide, cool, giant part of the game. None of that mm-hmm. anymore. We're in chapter three. There's a story happening. Exactly. So this is uh right when right after the little scroll happens mm-hmm. where you gave money to Aaron Linvale. I instead of going to Galen Bale, I went to uh Valen, and Valen took me to a person named Bodhi. And Bodhi is just this this creepy woman, right? Who only is out uh, at night in the in the graveyard. Mm-hmm. And I can make a comment to, to around the, you know, uh, somewhere around the lines of, yeah, this is pretty weird to, <laughs> to ask to meet in, like, in the middle of the night in a graveyard. And she said, look, there's a lot of reasons why we're doing this, but uh, needless to say, just roll over into this crypt and I'll tell you more. Right, <laughs> that's uh, that's the pickup line that no one wants to hear. No, so we go down into the crypt, and Bodhi basically says, "Look, um, these these people that are that are um, you know, having you do their bidding, want you to do their bidding. They're shadow thieves, and they're all horrible people." And I'm kind of like think back to last chapter. I'm like, "Yeah, probably right, Bodhi. I'm on I'm on board here, right?" Yeah, that checks out. Hey there, Cameron in the edit. We uh, had a little snafu in the recording, so this takes a little bit of a jump, but uh, you'll pick right up. There's a uh, like a thing that happens in between the, the two chapters, just like happens in the middle of every chapter, 
and uh, we get a little we get a little mission. So you'll see you'll see what we're talking about. Don't worry about it. And crucially, it is not a, a dream. It's this seems to be an honest to god, really real flashback slash flash over slash cut to perhaps I guess. Yeah, and I guess we know that because it doesn't end with a, a yellow greenish monster goblin us up. Yeah, like that's our big uh, that's our big kind of sign that it's not a dream or a blood wave crashing down onto us on a ship. Yeah, I mean, it also, I mean, I think what really helps it is that Irenicus holds up a newspaper and it has today's date on it. <laughs> and it and it says F. Catla Times, uh, uh, Ticklevar the Sorcerer, here or Baldur's Gate, defeats multiple dragons. Mm. Yeah. So, I think all of that probably suggests Well, if it said Ticklevar defeats dragons, you know it's a dream. Or is it? Oh. Yeah, it's... That uh, was meant it, to be more of a burn. Yeah, it hasn't happened yet. But it okay. will happen... Mm. Probably, we but we both make our agreements. Well, but but I, we didn't say what even is in the dream. It's just him whipping a million kinds of ass all over all these wizards. Like all these cowed wizards are like coming at him, and he's just shooting spells at him and blowing them up. I don't. Well, even... You you neglect to mention that one of the cowed wizards before he even shows up. Uh, wa- was like g- oogling um, Imowen. He was like he was like talking about her behind her back as she's in a cage, saying like, "Hey, you see that 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 new cute cute woman?" And then the other one said, "Oh, I can't wait to try out some enchantment magic on her. It's really gross. They're evil." Yeah, I mean, it, this the scene is set very early on that you do not want to like these these cowed wizards. No, and then Irenicus is blowing them up and turning them into chunks and like summoning a a demon on their face. And mm-hmm. and removing all their spell enchantments, spell protections. I mean, really, uh, really messing up their hardwood floors, as we used to say. Oh my god! It's just like picking up the couch and only picking up one side and dragging the other set all the way just across. Just having the floor. a pair of steel-toed boots and doing ballet in your foyer. Oh, hashtag ballet in your foyer. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we're right after that. So I, you know, I talk to Aaron Linvale. I wake up from this cutaway, or, or the game gives me back control, and uh, he says, "Listen, listen here. I know that that you are, uh, you know, someone who's done a couple missions in your life. You've saved a couple people in your day, but uh, we got a shipment of goods down in the docks, and dang, I've only got one person to to protect that thing. So, do you think you could go and uh, help this this woman named Mook? Do you think you could?" Uh, you could help her protect it from this other guild, whoever, the unnamed guild. Has he said anything about the other guild? They're just a bad guild. They're, they're bad. They're not them. Mm-hmm. They're not them. So then, therefore, they're bad. Mm-hmm. So I go there, and, and and as I'm walking there, I am, I don't know, uh, attacked maybe is a generous word, but I am accosted <laughs> by three individuals whose skin is blue and who appear to be completely devoid of body hair. And they're also kind of dressed in like a vaguely like North African, Egyptian, uh, uh, Arabian Peninsula kind of look to them. Hmm. You know, kind of kind of uh, like in that classic 80s D&D style, just other-y, right? Mm-hmm. Capital O, other-y. And, uh, you know, those could just be random people. Hard, hard to know. Athkatla is a diverse uh, place. It is. It's right in the middle. You know, it's kind of the southern sword coast. A lot of people from a lot of different places make their way here. That's, you know, it is what it is. And they uh, they say, hey, do you, you work for the Shadow Thieves? And I said, uh, well, who wants to know? Mm-hmm. And they Wise s- answer. I feel like you would never want to say yes to that question. No, no. It, because they, I mean, the first thing you should say is, uh, are you a cop? If you are, you have to tell me. Mm-hmm. Number one. Number two. Um, are you a shadow thief? I think you're one. You have to you have to flip the accusation back. Mm-hmm. But uh, so I say, they they come at me again and they say, no, seriously, are you a shadow thief? And I was like, no, I'm not. Leave me alone, because technically I'm not. And then immediately they come back with me of, you know what? We saw you come out of that building. Uh, get murdered, bro. <laughs> yeah. And okay. they just, just straight up attack me. They just come after me. And uh, weirdly enough, these blue-skinned people with no hair uh, who, like, kind of move in a creepy way, every time they hit me, they level-drain me. 
Oh, I just can't figure it out, you know. And mm-hmm. I take a couple, I take a couple uh, goes at this this encounter. They've got me in a bad position the first time, and and you know I heal up and do all that. And Mook is right there, so I go talk to her, and she says, "Hey, there's been this guy who's been uh, moving back and forth all day. He keeps coming by he's in different disguises." And I say, "All right, Mook, I'll, I'll hang out here until late tonight, and I'll let you know, uh, you know what I see." Lo and behold, is a man with blue skin. <laughs> And what appears to be no body hair. And he comes and he's like talking very seductively to Mook. And I don't mean like sexually seductive, but I mean like, oh, you could have a much better life over here. You mm. could you could join our guild and you would have a better time. You would guard even better, bigger crates, Mook. <laughs> and uh, she doesn't really go for it. And he just like slays her in one whack. And mm-hmm. then I got to go after him. Probably drains all of her experience. Yeah, just one slap. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna back to level one for uh, mm-hmm. for Mook if she were alive. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, then then I kill him, and uh, he turns into a big cloud, and then goes up a set of stairs, and then turns into a rat. Whatever could he be? I don't know. It like I don't. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a this other guild. They seem there seems to be uh, something something zany going on over there. Sure. But uh, so so then I go back and he gives me another mission. But I'm curious, since you're part of that other guild, what's the first mission you did? First mission is I, I was tasked with uh, stealing a shipment of goods. Hold on, from this person named Mook. One moment. Say what now? <laughs> yeah. So uh, Bodhi says, "Yeah, uh, I need you to go grab this crate." And I said, "Where's the crate?" And there, they, and she said, "Well, there. It's, it's kind of a secret, but they're they're in the docks district." And 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 I need you to get this crate before before it heads out, right? Mm-hmm. So I said sure. And I roll over, and I the first thing I do is there's like a big ship in the bottom of the map, so I just roll over to the big ship because I was like, well, surely they're loading the ship up, and that's where the crate would be. Um, but it wasn't, and I said, okay, well, that's fine. I'll maybe there's like a lead in the Shadow Thieves Guild. So I just roll over there, and the moment any Shadow Thief sees me. Uh, they they say I can't believe you're even showing your face here. We're gonna kill you. <laughs> yeah, it's, so, it does seem like you've made a choice. Yeah. So um, so they attack me and I murder them and then I I roll inside the Shadow Thieves Guild and like people keep attacking me and it's like seventy people that I end up killing like <laughs> going through this this like just opening boxes like trying to find this crate where's the crate I don't know it's like people are like just screaming it's like a five alarm you know emergency mm-hmm. I mean to be fair game. within the forgotten realms I think that Balthazar is certainly at level 40 probably at least a five alarm emergency everywhere everywhere Balthazar's like snoring is a five alarm emergency. Like, because in the right pattern, it could just summon a demon. What level is Elminster? I don't know. Do you want to Google that? <laughs> I, I'm going to Google it, but but continue continue sure. telling your your narrative here. So, I I I, I roll through and I I open every every darn every gosh darn door in this Shadow Thieves Guild, I, except for one. There's one door that I can open. I'm annoyed by that. But I don't find the the crate. And then I like roll out and I'm like, oh, there's a little boat over there. And then I see the little boat and I go down there and I kill Mook, who attacks me, and I get a crate. And so so then I, I bring the crate back to Bodhi. So it only costs like 100 people their lives. You know, that's a small price to pay for a crate. But it's very strange because the dialogue options after I turn in the crate were were very not indicative of what I just did because mm-hmm. I, I like I can say something like oh that seems like uh, you we hardly did anything to the Shadow Thieves Guild there but no I did so <laughs> like there's not one anymore <laughs> like all of their bodies and the, their equipment are just like strewn around a lot of them just have like piles of equipment on the ground with nobody because they just blew up <laughs> Uh, and, and then, and then uh, Bodhi congratulated you on a, a job well done, a stealthy job well done. I, well, actually, she kind of said very. It, well, it was very upfront, and I did like this. She's like, "Look, if you show your face over there, they're probably going to attack you. I don't think there's a way to do this sneakily," which I thought was like refreshing, right? Yeah. Well, it's good to let you know. Sure. Can I give you a little update on this Elminster thing? Yeah. Apparently, the Baldur's Gate manual, Baldur's Gate one says that Elminster is level 29. Really? Yeah. 
That's probably that can't be true. But uh interesting little tidbit. Maybe that's why Elminster doesn't show up in this game. Mm, just because you could, just because you you can't you can't do that. You can you can't like have Elminster himself. Mm-mm. Transform in and then then uh, I don't know summoning demons and whatnot going to hell and back. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure, uh, Kunzelman, that from my knowledge of at least of third edition, so not a one to one correspondence, but like there were stat blocks of some deities. Yeah, written up. Yeah, they are not level forty. No, I don't think that. I don't think they are. I mean, this is low. Yeah. This is two point five, and uh, I certainly don't think that anything is level forty at this point. Yeah. So. So. It's Balthazar's a real thing. How how what level is Ticklevar? I think fourteen. Okay, fourteen, fifteen, somewhere there. Like so, getting getting up there towards Dritz, basically. Yeah, yeah, almost as good, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so the the next little <laughs> thing that I did, I talked to Aaron Lundvale. It's very very. This is very Shadow Thieves. This whole operation. I say, look, hey, I did this thing for you. Um, when can we get on this boat and get going? Yeah. You know, when can I go rescue Emmowin? And I say, hold if, on, hold if on. I can, if I can save the package that you're going to ship via boat, surely you can just put me on that boat I think they and were send receiving. me to where I want to go. I think they were mm. receiving, yeah. This is a receiving office, not a shipping office. They, uh, so they, they, he comes at me and he says, listen, I got a couple shadow thieves that are going to be defecting. These are defectors. This is like Soviet Union style over here. They gotta, they gotta get a message, and they gotta roll it up in a cigar, and they gotta like light it, and then flick it in the eye of someone across the street, mm. and that person goes blind, but then they get, they get to get out. It's that level. You, you went there. Yeah, we go there. So, um, so he says, "Look, you gotta go to the Five Flagons Inn on the second story. You remember the Five Flagons Inn? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in the Bridge District, and he says on the second floor, there's going to be." two people there and they're waiting for a recruiter to show up you need to get there defeat them and then meet the recruiter in their place oh and pose as the people who are trying to meet the recruiter or just pose as people who are trying to not necessarily as them oh okay you know that complicates the story if there's there's too many people there um we go and do that and um they immediately say, "Oh, who are you here to to meet?" And I and I was like, "Oh, the recruiter, of course." And they're like, "What's the recruiter's name?" And I was like, "It's the the one who does the recruiting." Mm. And they immediately come after me. Did you have a dialogue option that was correct, or were you just kind of boned? No, nope. your- yeah, yeah. There was no way, as far as I could tell, to like dialogue my way around it. So I did what any rational person would do, and I summoned a fire elemental. <laughs> In the middle of an inn. Yeah, well, the top floor of an inn, in, uh, sure. of an inn to be fair. And uh, some of the fire elementals slayed these dudes. Um, the recruiter comes, and he says, Ah, yes, uh, the people I'm supposed to meet, you, you definitely know my name. And uh, here's the kicker. When I was killing the other dudes, they did say his name. So I was able to scroll up, you know, with my <laughs> little scroll wheel, and I, I look in the dialogue option there, and I, I recognize his name. It's like... It's not Kalar, but it's something like that, like Kalen, maybe. And I uh, click the, the right thing, and he says, no, you're definitely not the right people. And then he attacks me anyway. Well, darn. Yeah, so I really felt like I was getting kind of shoved into a particular option there. But he does say uh, something about the graveyard district. And so I get a little note about the ga- graveyard district, and I go back to uh, Aaron Linvale, the Shadow Master, and I say, hey, buddy. I done did the damn thing for you. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I have the last mission, but what is what is the second thing that you did? So the interesting thing is Bodhi gives me an option and says it very explicitly in a little bit, maybe, maybe too gamey of terms. Hey, I've got a choice of two different things that you could do right now. For those who are heroically inclined and don't want to get their hands dirty, and she says it in kind of a denigrating manner, right? I have one task, but if you're not above skullduggery, I'll have you do another thing, right? Hmm. So about Balthazar, so it's so it's obviously saying, hey, even though you've chosen this perhaps less scrupulous faction, if you are a good player, you can do this without losing reputation. Well, uh, yeah, I, I mean, 
I also wonder, too, like, with the Thieves' Guild, there's no question of that. You're just going to do bad stuff for the Thieves' Guild. Mm -hmm. And Bodhi has sold her whole thing to you based on the fact that you're not the Thieves' Guild. You have an option to not be, like, morally bankrupt. Sure. You know what I mean? So, like, I I like the idea that, like, the game actually leans into that rather than being like, all right, this is another type of bad choice. Yeah, and I think that kind of the interesting wrinkle is that Bodhi, Bodhi's whole thing is, hey, you've been strung along by people who are the Thieves Guild. I am being very upfront with you, mm-hmm. right? Like, we are just trying to wreck the Thieves Guild. That is my goal, okay? And, and, I'll, and I'll help you on, his, on the way. So anyway, I said, yeah, sure, let's do the Skullduggery one. I'm fine with that. And she basically says, yeah, I want to. There's like this important merchant... Um, I want, and I think it's kind of a two birds with one stone situation. One, this merchant kind of might be uh, providing stuff to the Thieves Guild. And two, I want you to, like, murder him and frame the Thieves Guild by, like, leaving this blade and cloak there. Right? Literally cloak and dagger. Exactly. So I roll over there, and I... I I go up and like the the dialogue is hilarious because it's like hey, uh, the the <laughs> you know Bodhi just sent me here to frame you and 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 kill you and then frame the or yeah Bodhi sent me here to kill you and frame the shadow thieves for your death and the guy says oh my gosh my guards are gonna stop you <laughs> and I said do you really think that's gonna happen and and and, and he's like well. Uh, and I said, they're, they haven't stopped me yet, and I'm here talking to you. Uh-oh. And, uh, and then uh, I say, well, hey, how about this? How about you just get out of town? How about you just, like, get out of town for, like, a couple months? And, and then this will all be fine. And he said, really? And I was like, yeah. And then he, like, runs away and says, okay, great, I'll go. Guards, kill him. <laughs> and then Balthazar was like, mm, no, that's not going to work. And so, so Balthazar, like, I think I have to reload to catch him before he leaves under this, like, rubric. Mm-hmm. But, like, with Whirlwind, I can easily catch this NPC before they leave the, <laughs> before they leave the house. And I just drop the, uh, I drop the cloak and dagger in, like, the fountain. Dang. Um, <laughs> yeah. you, that guy made a bad decision. He really did. He didn't know what he was in for. <laughs> he did not. I don't. That's the thing is there is this element of obviously everyone knows who Balthazar is, but obviously not, right? <laughs> they know who he is, but not what he's capable of. There you go. It's kind of like it's the opposite of the William Wallace thing. Oh, you, you fireballs out of his eyes and lightning bolts out of his arse, mm-hmm. right? But it's the opposite of Balthazar. It's like, yeah, I heard he like turned over a cart once. Mm-hmm. He, he got mad. Just, <laughs> he got mad once and like threw a tomato at somebody mm-hmm. it's just all of the all of the rumors instead of being becoming more grandiose have become more and more like petty yeah little did they know that he one time touched a man with his left hand and that person exploded <laughs> into chugs i you know it, it it is amazing to me that we had a serial killer running around the city who was skinning people alive and that's somehow less horrifying than what balthazar does in any given encounter on a day when he travels between districts and like <laughs> brigands attack him, and then the, the like nobles have to convene to find out how to clean it up. Because <laughs> like the the chunks are going so they're they're coming down like chimneys of rich people, and it's like a real problem then. Right? It's like a public health concern. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was the that was the uh, that was the real issue with the spell plague. In fact. Oh yeah, no. Y'all ever think about spell plague? Yeah, hashtag spell plague. Hashtag spell plague. But well, that's so. Do you know what the other option was? Did you? Did you? I did not. Okay. I did not reload to see what the other option was. So, mm-hmm. so well, I went back. You know, I'm back with Aaron Linvale, and he says, "All right, I got one more. Got one last job for you. One last job. One last. The big job. dirty. Well, actually, it, it is in fact the big dirty, and uh, I'm stealing change." <laughs> and um no, Aaron comes back. What if that is it? What if what if the Thieves Guild are an elaborate trailer park boys esque like get rich quick scheme where they're gonna mm-hmm. make like twelve hundred dollars? 
Oh, someone's got to make that. Beam dog, get on that game. Beam dog, what are you doing, <laughs> Phil? We got we got to get that dude back on here. <laughs> yeah, we got to get that. We've got the pitch for you. We got the pitch for him. He did kind of like intimate it when he was like, "Well, look, if you remade the Baldur's Gate series." What would that look like? And we didn't have an answer then, but we've got an answer right now. <laughs> you have the Trailer Park Boys. Isometric Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> yes. Mm. <laughs> Go, uh, if, you, you know, if you've been listening to the show and you didn't listen to that episode, we talked to Phil Daigle, who is uh, uh, not lead creative, but one of the developers uh, for uh, the Enhanced Editions over at Dog right now. Um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll put a little link in here. Yeah, bam. Boom. Liberty blap. Um but yeah, so so when I go back to him this time after this recruitment mission, he says, "You'll never guess what happened to me." <laughs> okay, and I'm like, hey, "What happened, Aaron?" And he says, "I got attacked by some people. They came in here and they tried to get me. And I swear to God, I think they might be vampires." <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what on earth made him think that? I think it's the vampirologist who was hanging out with him. I don't know. He actually doesn't say, but he's like. You know what? There's this leader over there. I don't like her very much. Her name's Bodhi. I'm pretty sure she's a vampire. I'm like 88% sure <laughs> she's a vampire. Every time she hits me, it drains two levels of experience. I'm a I'm a level three or I'm a <laughs> dirt w- farmer. Level three dirt. Well, no, I mean he's promoted at a dirt farmer, but he's like a level two thief, level one fighter. Mm. And that's bad. You don't want to be that when you're the <laughs> when the the shadow master. <laughs> you know? You don't want people mm-hmm. to think you're too big for your britches. And sure. S- and so he says, look, you got to go to the graveyard district. You got to take care of it. You got to go. And he says, here, take this. And he gives me a bunch of stakes, like a <laughs> stack of stakes, like for nailing through the hearts of vampires. And he says, I don't know what you're supposed to do with this, but hop to it, buster. Yeah, I only paid the vampirologist for half an hour. So we didn't get to that part of the of the of the you know anatomy of vampires and and their weaknesses but i i've just read somewhere that these stakes are, could be useful Fifteen thousand gold only goes so far <laughs> like i get it you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what if the, what if the, that is the entirety of what we spent that money on four stakes <laughs> and the and the expertise of uh of half an hour of a vampirologist time mm-hmm. it's like a little gnome Mm-hmm. He, just, he just casts illusions of vampires. He's like, this is what you do. You got to get them right here, right in the... And, he, and it's all just professional wrestling moves. Like, you got to jump off the top rope up here. Bam. <laughs> bam. Yeah, that's 100%. All right, Beam Dog, we've got two pitches for you. Uh, number one, Trailer Park Boys, isometric. We already talked about that. Number two, gnome professional wrestler who defeats yeah. vampires. And he's kind of like a, a raconteur and a con man on the side. Mm-hmm. You know, we got two ideas. Pay us for them. Gosh, absolutely. Yeah, give us that money. Everybody, give us that money. You can support us on Patreon. Um, so if, you, if we get to ten thousand dollars a month, we we will make these games. Yeah, I will learn how. I will learn how to make mods for Baldur's Gate. Can't be that. I hard. will take my half of the money and then just pay someone to make my 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 game. Oh, dang! That's much better. I'm I'm going to go back. <laughs> I'm going to do that part. <laughs> okay, we'll contract someone to make a Baldur's Gate mod. There you go. Um. So I go to the graveyard district, and um, you know I gotta I gotta root around a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know I gotta walk around. It. I don't exactly know how to get into the catacomb, so I'm opening doors and going in there. And you know there's like some mummies in one, and some big old skeleton dudes in another. You know the norm mm-hmm. the normal stuff. And uh, I I come upon a guy, or actually I say a guy. I come upon a screaming grave. <laughs> okay. And I click on it. It's got the little circle thing. And I click on it, and this, this dude comes out, and his name is Tear Deer. T I R D I R. And he says, Hey, I've been buried alive, and it was bad. And I say, Okay. What do you, what, what's up? And he says, I, You know, people were extorting money from me, and I needed, uh, and I paid them, and then they buried me anyway. And he says, The grave digger's involved. So I go talk to the grave digger, and the grave digger says, Yeah, do you need any help with anything? And I was like, you talking about burying people alive? And he was like, yeah, I think, oh, uh, no, 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 no. I, I don't think so. And so then I, like, told him that he was bad and that he shouldn't do that anymore. And he literally just ran away. Mm. Yeah, and he said there was a man in red who helped him do it. And that's the <clears throat> end of this quest because I forgot to follow up on it. 
Oh my gosh, we missed our time with Elminster. <gasps> you think? Do you think that <laughs> Elminster is burying people alive? <laughs> That's just <laughs> through mundane means too. Not even like when not you're even an like, all-powerful wizard. There's there's <laughs> nothing that gets you going more than burying a man alive with your bare hands. Just yeah. the on on honest day's work of burying a man alive. Mm-hmm. Dang, I hard hope. to know. I he mean, could just be ca- like he could literally instead of doing that, he could just like roll into town, stone to mud, then mud to stone, like stone <laughs> to mud. While someone's standing on it, they sink down. Okay, mud to stone, bam, buried alive, bam, like emerald, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> you think Elminster? He's like doing the hand thing too, bam, bam. Oh yeah, bam, bam. You were you were trapped. You you are trapped seventy five percent of the way into into the ground. You're ten percent of the way into the ground. <laughs> like you you live, you die. We'll never know because you didn't finish this quest. Oh, uh, maybe I'll do it one day, but probably not. So I mm-hmm. didn't find that out. Also, there's another crypt with a uh, a dude in there, just called the Crypt King. Whoa! And I just killed him. No quest or anything. Just, I mean. He, wasn't the king for very long. I guess I'm the Crypt King now. <laughs> you are. That's that's how it works. So how did your third quest go? Yeah, so I uh, I talk with Bodhi. She says, yeah, we got to take down. We got to take down the, the, the head of the Shadow Thieves. We got to take down Aaron Linvale. Ugh, Shadow Master. The Shadow Master. And I say, okay, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. So I go back into the utterly empty compound of the Shadow Thieves, just, like, covered in blood, right? Mm -hmm. Just entrails, like, from the last time when I was lost and I couldn't find a crate. And and I'm told, hey, you may have to, like, find, like, this person... uh, that that was uh, captured. One of one of my associates was captured there, and they may be holding him. He might be able to help you out. But so this is my question, right? Mm-hmm. So I feel like we're kind of intersecting here. Mm-hmm. Did you go down into the into like the Shadow Thieves area where there's all this like nonsense? Yeah, yeah, that's where Aaron Linvale is. He's like in the very very bottom. There's a lot of weird stuff there. I have my own story about this nonsense, but I'll let you tell your story. Yeah, so. I roll down there, and the first door on my right, so I'm just, okay, I'll, I'll hug right. I open a door, and there's just a pack of orcs in a tunnel. Hmm. They're just behind a door. Well. And and then this is the thing. It, it kind of, like, goes, and there's a tunnel, and you can click to go to a different screen. I'm like, oh, maybe there was, like, a quest I don't know about where, like, orcs were invading the Shadow Thieves. And maybe that's what Kunzelman's dealing with now, right? Maybe he's having to, like fend off these orcs because they're literally at the Shadow Thieves' door. No, I leave that door, and it's just a one-way exit out of the Shadow Thieves' lair. Yeah. It's not like going anywhere that orcs would be. No. So, no. So, what what am I to think? One of two things. One, the Shadow Thieves are in league with orcs, just beings of pure chaos, right? I mean, they're not pure chaos. Remember that we recruited them into our free people's army. Attacking Dragon Spear Castle. That's true. No, that's true. You know, although it is like a little, it is like a little question mark in terms of Forgotten Realms lore, like the the source of orcs, right? Because there there, there are some different interpretations of kind of what they are. Goblinoids, from from everything I remember, tend to be like kind of explained as these are these are like natural phenomena as any species, right? Well, yeah, they're you like know? they were created slash uplifted by their dude. They have a god yeah. who like yeah. The orcs have Grumish. Yes, they have a whole pantheon. Like, like, they have a like whole pantheon. The, like but Grumish the is the, the yeah. Grumish is the is the is the big one. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he's just the, Odin, right? Grumish is just Odin. Yeah, of the blind kind of searing seer seeing deity, kind of one of those. Well, yeah, he's, he's like blind in one eye, and he's like war and wisdom. I think mm-hmm. for his like portfolio. No, it is like it's a one to one correspondence. Um, but I do remember some things about uh, Forgotten Realms novels like the Dritz a Thousand Orcs, right? Mm-hmm. Like those, where orcs are almost, like, they almost just crawl up out of the ground, right? Well, yeah, because they're like, well, not to get all lore about it, mm-hmm. but those are very particular because that's a bunch of different mountain tribes who are all unified under one leader. 
Sure. In a, in a bid to take over a city of the north, and I think they do end up taking the city of the north. So that's it's kind of not like uh, not quite representative the same. of uh, representative of Orkdom as a whole. Yeah, exactly. This is, it's kind yeah. of a special case. Okay, so on the one hand, they're allied with orcs, who are obviously very complicated and not solely beings of pure chaos, and, and, even though they are chaotic evil overwhelmingly in the same way kind of like a, a dark elves are. Important to note here, we haven't seen a single orc in this city uh, no. this entire game. So yeah, it doesn't make a single bit of sense why, why they're there. Or two, they have been captured by the Shadow Thieves and just placed in these hallways for an invasion situation as just a natural trap, right? Mm, okay. Which opens up way more questions. That's way more interesting and problematic. Who's importing all these orcs? Who's importing these orcs? Who feeds them? Where do they sleep? Hmm. Where do they use the bathroom? I don't know. This is not so, Gygaxian. No. I There's not a single ot yug in this entire place. <laughs> no. Where would where would all the orc waste go? I don't know. Mm, unrealistic immersion destroyed yep no immersion zero stars i roll around and there's like several groups of orcs and there's a there's a fake town like a like a like a training town to like practice mugging people i guess there's also a um a large chamber of just spikes and like a pool of blood in the middle at the uh, at the you know bodhi's lair yeah in yeah the, in the in the crypt yes but so maybe equally bad, but mm-hmm. but yeah. So you know, eventually I kind of get to the to the bottom half with Aaron Linvale, but only after that that weird town and like I crossed a bridge and there were like dark spirits and a wind elemental just guarding a pipe that I had to walk across. <laughs> it was all very bizarre. There's also a uh, torture pit. Yeah, the, the, of course. There's a torture room there, and there's actually a torturer. And who, and when I see him, the torturer actually says, "Hey." I guess it's up to the torturer to take care of you. <laughs> like a lot of pride in his work. I mean, yeah, I guess. Like a lot of simultaneous pride and uh, like kind of a self-disparaging comment of like, oh, it's going to take the torturer. The torturer is going to be the one that has to step up. Do you think he said it in like, uh, in like the droopy voice? Where he's like, I guess it's up for the torturer to do it. <laughs> I, that's why I wish this part was voice acted, so I could get that. When I but when I got get the torturer, I free kind of Bodhi's associate, and Bodhi's ato- associate tells me, "Yeah, you got to get two things to get to Aaron Linvale. You got to hit a button somewhere in the north mm. of this compound, and you've got to find a key off of this wizard. Good luck!" And then he, he peaced out. Oh, uh, that's interesting because I also hit that button, and I had no idea what it was for, and it just uh, like electrocuted me every time because uh, it doesn't do anything on my end. Yeah, I hit the button, I, I kill this wizard, and Aaron Linvale says, Ah, you will be the first to fall. He actually says, Bodhi, and I'm quoting here, Bodhi, that bitch, Uh-oh. has finally come down here. You will be the first to fall. And I think my first reaction, like, as a player was, What do you mean I'll be the first to fall? You're the only one left. You're the whole guild. He, first to fall. He doesn't know that. Yeah, I guess not. I guess he's, like, in his, like, very opulent chamber with, like, bubble bath, right? Like, a a very opulent chamber with a bubble bath and, like, obviously, like, his, his, like, bed chambers, I guess. But also, like, 15 people. Very weird. His, uh, he still thinks his best best friend Buster the Air Elemental is out there, like, fending people off, you know? Yeah. He thinks you just did some trickery. Mm Mm-hmm. So... Anyway, it's like uh, the first time I did this fight, I had no special abilities left because like, you can't rest at all in this in this area. Mm-hmm. So like I do it, but I just eventually like I kill most people, but I eventually like fail a save because I'm not berserk. So I reload and like go out and rest and and then pop these people. I did use a uh, a cool little a cool little. Uh, uh, horn that I have, I've put together and I've improved. It's the iron horn that summons like the uh, the iron warrior, right? Yeah, like the berserker warrior guy. How do you improve that thing? There's a fellow in the uh, there's a fellow in Joaquin's promenade. Yeah, what that you, you can what's you you got to take like a, st- a special stone to mm. it, like a sunstone or something along those lines. Okay, that yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I'm missing. I have the first part of the horn and I wanted to upgrade it and I didn't look it up to, to yeah. see what I had to do. It's the ma- he maxes out at level nine. He's not huge, but it's it's like enough if you put him on a spellcaster on the other side of the room. He'll like keep them occupied. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Um, the first time I fought, when I had no special abilities, one of the spellcasters uh, summoned a, like a goth or a, uh, not a goth, but a, um, one of those uh, horrible demons that is not a balor, but it's like spindly. Um, I do know what you're talking about. Yeah, a demon. Yeah. Yeah, they summoned a huge demon from the abyss, and I just walked outside, and the demon killed, like, half of them. I had the option as Balthazar, uh, not a Nishru. Yeah. Is it a Nishru? I think so. I had the, in any case, whatever the demon summoning wizard spell is, I had the option in this episode to take it, and I chose you, not Ticklevar to. could have chosen that? Heck yeah, he could have. He's a sorcerer, well, man. Well, I mean... I don't blame you for not because those things kill your own part. Like you have to immediately charm demon or something, right? No, you have to cast protection from evil ten foot radius on your party first, uh, and then you summon the demon. They cannot attack you if you have protection of evil mm-hmm. up first. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of some classic wizardry. Mm. Well, mine, my, my. Well, did you say anything when you killed him? No, but he did drop some stakes, and I looked at him, and I'm like, oh, that's weird. Should have given them to, to me. If only I'd had them. I like the idea that these are both happening concurrently. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, that's not true. But uh, So I go into the, the crypt where, where mm-hmm. Bodhi is, and I go down first, and there's like a million spiders. And there's a giant spider's nest in this, this zone. Okay. No vampires to be seen. I kill all these spiders. And I go into this little, like, you know, hutch. I, that's the best way to describe it. Spider hutch. And there's a drow in there. Her name is Pine mm-hmm. Eye. Ooh. And she doesn't... She opens with, I see you've got a drow with you. I'm going to kill you all to punish you for hanging out with a surface dweller. And then she just... She summons, like, 30 spiders. 30, like, really small little, like... Uh, what, were, what were they called in 4th edition? Like, minions? Yeah. Uh, something, whatever that is. So she summons like a bunch of little crappy ones, and I skull trap them all, and then kill her really quickly. But she has nothing to do, as far as I can tell, with any of the rest of it. Yeah, no, I think I, I actually ran into her snooping around the crypts. Mm-hmm. She attacked me too. Well, yeah. So you, there is. Did you check the middle of that chamber? Yeah, I did. There's an onyx uh, spider figurine. You can summon a spider once a day. Oh, that's not what I had. What'd you have? I think I had an iron stone. Well, I got that too, but I think the actual that the the woman dropped Ooh. the spider figurine. I don't think I, I don't think I looted her then. Oh no, I, think I might have goofed it. Oh well. yeah, but because the between that and uh, in uh, in good old Aaron Linvale's house or in his little chamber, I got a a gin ring that can summon a gin once a day. That's pr- that's pretty good. That's going to really do some damage to that genie count. I, you know what? I also had the option to either summon an Afrit, a Jinn, or a Dao. Which would have all counted towards the genie e- count. Exactly. And I might have stuck away from those just to not have to deal with it at all. <laughs> um, although, I, I, will, I will say someone on Reddit, I think, uh, very patiently explained to me the difference between a Jinn, Dao, and... Ifrit, and I appreciate it. It's all that. about where they're from. It's all about where they're from. It's all about nationality. Well, not, it's all about not nationality. It's just like stalactites and stalagmites. It's like planar, planarality? Planarality. Planarality. Anyway, so so then I like go up there. There's a wizard. The Shadow City Eves have sent me a wizard with a golem, because uh, apparently the these vampires are behind this like impenetrable blue door, and uh, they smash it open for me. And I go in, and there's a, a lo and behold... A vampire. Mm. Who would have thunk it? There's a vampire in there. And he says, oh, he, he grabs his mustache with both hands and just begins tugging on it viciously. <laughs> and he says, oh, you'll <laughs> never be able to kill me and all the other vampires. And uh, and I do. I summon a mm-hmm. bunch of elementals and they go hog wild. I do find a giant room that's full of spikes with a giant pool of blood in the middle. I find a little side chamber that's like a bathtub full of blood. That mm-hmm. I click on, it's got it's got the little circly click on me mm-hmm. me button to it, and I find a mace of disruption, which is pretty cool. Whoa! It's a. Do you know what that is? Yeah, disruption are the that's that's the anti undead enchantment mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, so mm-hmm. so they have to. It's like a plus four saving throw, and uh, if they miss on the saving throw, then they just explode. 
Now, is that a Mace of Disruption plus one or plus two? Plus one. So you can get that enchanted and improved to plus two at uh, the blacksmith in the dock district, mm, Cromwell. And if you at Cromwell, and if you do so, there are there is like a very powerful lich that's kind of like the side boss of the game, right? Mm-hmm. I will not say this lich's name. Spoilers, because mm-hmm. we haven't talked about it and, yet. And if you say it three times, he is summoned. Yeah. Um, so I will not say it even once, not even once, but. That this thing can only be damaged by weapons that are uh, plus five or more. Mm. But there are some exceptions. One of those exceptions is the plus two Mace of Disruption because, like, the when you add like the plus from the undead, like it gets there mm. basically. Gotcha. And another, like, another one is Daystar, which is a, a sword that that drops in like the the city gate district or something. So, like, there's there's like a couple of uh, of uh, exceptions. I'm going to upgrade that thing. I'm going to do it. You should, should. Uh, so, so I kind of roll through this this whole little place. I Bodie's like house is not nearly as interesting as I think the thieves guild is. Not at all. Yeah, I was going to ask you. It had to be pretty simple. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty limited. Um, like six chambers tops. There's like a little resting chamber or you know a, a series of coffins. And every time you kill kill one of the named, because there's named vampires and fledgling vampires, every time you kill a named vampire, you can follow their, like, fart cloud all the way back to their coffin, where they go to regenerate, presumably. And you go to the coffins, and you, like, click on it, and it puts a stake through their heart. When you do it through the third one, Bodhi shows up. Ooh. And she says, uh, hey there, hey there, buddy. Uh, it seems like you've killed all these bros. I'm going to fight you now to test you. And so, so we fight, 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 fight. And she says, ah, you, you done did a game, uh, did a dang good job mm-hmm. there, uh, Chickalvar. I can't believe you fight so good. I can't believe you can't defeat these dragons, but you can defeat me so quickly. <laughs> and she says, look, I know all kinds of shit about you, and so do all the Thieves Guild. They know you're a ball spawn. I know you're a ball spawn. They attacked Irenicus looking for you. Uh, I'm Irenicus's sister, BT dubs. Don't worry about it. Um, mm. You can't defeat me now because I won't let you. And she like zipped away. So it was like a big old info dump here. Whoa. So I go back to the Shadow Thieves and I say, hey, what the hell is going on here? And they say, yep, we used to have a deal with Irenicus. Didn't really work out. We attacked his... Uh, uh, enclave, you know, his dungeon, the very mm-hmm. first dungeon at the beginning of the game when we saw, like, that weird, like, war going on in there. And uh, he says, um, the only reason that we have been following you and, like, keeping an eye on you is you're the only... Your group are the only people that made it out of there alive. Everyone else died. So we knew you had to be special. And that's why we're helping you. And now that you've cleared Bodhi out of the way, we can get on a dang boat and we can go to Spellhold. Mm. Mm-hmm. What spell hold? Well, you tell me what spell hold is. I will. So after I killed good old good old Linvale, I head back to Bodhi, and Bodhi admits, "Hey, it's it's good that we got rid of the shadow thieves. They weren't even like the biggest thorn in my side, right? They they were just like a thing that I wanted to get rid of. More or less, I was just testing you. I wanted to see if you were as strong as I heard you were, and you are. You're super strong." And she says that that's when she reveals to me her familial ties with Irenicus. She says that she wants to basically get back in touch with Irenicus where they're the only surviving family members left. They both, she says that they've both like artificially extended their life. We assume that she's been able to do so through vampirism. Irenicus is a bit of a question mark. Um, and she says that now that he's kind of beleaguered and has, like, the cowed wizards after him and had to deal with all these shadow thieves and he's outside of his place of power, he's probably weakened enough where if she were able to, like, interact with him and get to him, she'd be able to, like, get the power she wants out of him, get the information or whatever it is she wants out of him, right? And, and I tell her, well, look, I just want my vengeance. And she, she says, look, you can have your vengeance. I just want to see him first. And I don't like that deal at all. And I have the stakes in my inventory. Mm. And You could really I, give it to her. 
Yeah, and so I try to click any way to say, no, I refuse. I'm going to kill him the moment I see him. And there's nothing you can do to stop that. I do. Balthazar does not get the narrative option, right, mm. to do that at all. So the only thing I can say is, oh, begrudgingly, okay, well, as long as you stay out of my way, that works. And she explains that Immelwyn is being, and Irenicus are being kept in spell hold, which is like, it's it's like the the black site to end all black sites basically for wizards right? and unique people and, and like unique people and interplanar beings it seems and all sorts of unsavory sorts and maybe savory sorts yeah all basically it's the institutional equivalent of kind of like the hellboy what goes bump in the night but instead of like a team to go defeat them it is a hole to throw them in yeah yeah so right? it's kind of like uh I don't know, like the negative zone in, in mm. Civil War, or perhaps, uh, you know, a real world black site where people are extraordinarily renditioned to and have no yeah. legal rights. But the the big difference here is that the the idea that these people are so dangerous that uh, institutions like, and Bodhi says this like pretty eloquently, without defending the institution, she's obviously like very much neutral on the existence of the institution, right? But uh, she does say, yeah, it, it's it's a it's a real bad place, and um, and basically it was created because the you know the powers that be had no idea what to do with people of extraordinary talents and power, and they just created it, and the institutions just kind of chugged along, self perpetuating after that. Yeah, I, I think another key difference between it and uh, the real world is that uh, there are wizards. There are wizards, and she also did hint that it's almost as if the cow like there is a separate governance going on at the spell hold yeah at this kind of like asylum for the for the magically inclined or what have you uh she just she says basically yeah it's beyond the jurisdiction of even like the cowed wizards here like I, it's almost as if the cowed wizards can like send people there but once they go there it's not like you you can't like request them to come back um so and that basically leaves us to the point where we can click a button and head there. Yeah, we can go. And I think that closes out chapter three. Basically. So I haven't done it. I said, hold on, give me a minute. I need to I need to go buy some arrows. Mm-hmm. And then I save my game. So next episode, we're going to spell hold. Let's do it. And that really gets us on a journey over the next several episodes of uh, kind of like set piece after set piece there's not going to be another instance like love like chapter two when we're kind of like choosing what we want to do yeah we're going to be we're going to be put in situations and we're going to have to react and we're not going to have kind of the safety of some neutral area to retreat to Mm -hmm. we're going to be forced into making decisions into getting in the action so Mm -hmm. it's going to it's going to be some exciting episodes Mm -hmm. and then we are clipping right along to being done with Baldur's Gate 2, which is both exciting and kind of sad, I think. Sure. I mean, nothing gold can stay, um, but there's always thrown a ball to look forward to, mm. which, which, it, which, it, which will be great. But I'm just, I'm just excited to see how even Baldur's Gate uh, ends up and how these characters deal with it, because I still think that we've got a lot to, a lot to see from Ticklevar and how he responds to some of the challenges that lay ahead. Mm-hmm. You mean dragons? Yeah, uh, yeah, dragons. Well, this was episode 30. Uh, Like I said at the top of the episode, please hit that like button. Now you know if you liked it or not. Um, Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to Ranged Touch. Uh, You can follow us on Twitter. uh, And you can follow, you should follow, the Ranged Touch official account. It's at Ranged Touch. Also down in the description. You should like us on Facebook. Also down in the description. And uh, if you really like the show, you should think about supporting us financially on Patreon. For as little as a dollar, you can make sure that we keep making this show and other things. And a lot of that's going to get announced in the next couple weeks. So, And some of it might even be announced by the time that you're hearing this. I'm not yes. quite sure on our timetable because we're recording a bit early. Trying to get ahead. Trying to get ahead because we know we, we, we know we got to pace ourselves. It's going to be really big, exciting stuff. We don't want to get overwhelmed. Exactly. It's going to be good. So... Uh, Thanks so much for listening to this episode. I'm Cameron. And I'm Danny. Goodbye. Ciao.